Okay, so welcome back to another presentation. We're going to look at water harvesting today. Uh, the presentation itself is available Creative Commons, non-commercial, share alike. Um, you can find the link uh, in the description below. And uh, yeah, give it a like, subscribe if you uh, if you want to get notified when the next one comes out. So, okay, so water harvesting with earth ships. Um, Let's kind of take two minutes here to think about why. Before we get into water harvesting, earthship style, why do we actually want to harvest rainwater in Taiwan or anywhere else, UK, US or Europe? Um, in Taiwan, we get a bit more rain than the UK, but the UK still gets plenty. Um, this is an image of Morakot, I think, from NASA. Yeah, from a NASA website. Uh, you can see the size of us over here and the size of Morocco. It was it was pretty deadly in 2009. Um, Taiwan is actually the rainiest <laughs> developed country on the planet, As, like the whole planet. Taiwan is the rainiest in terms of developed nations. We get an average of 2.6 meters of rain annually. That's you know, old school, old money, eight eight and a half feet, 102 inches. 2,600 millimetres, obviously. Uh, this typhoon here on the screen was the heaviest rainfall in history for Taiwan. Um, 3.06 metres of rain in Alishan and Jiayi. That's over 10 feet. <laughs> that was mind-boggling. 120 inches, and that was just in, in the two or three days it took the typhoon to go through. So. UK average rainfall is what, 800, 900 millimetres, just under a metre. Let's say 800 times four would be 3.2. Nearly th nearly four years, three or four, three or four years of average annual UK rainfall in two or three days hit Taiwan then. Uh, there's a link there to the, the Central Weather Bureau, uh, the Taiwanese Central Weather Bureau, lots of uh, figures and statistics there for you. So again, the question, why do we want to retain water in a country like Taiwan where we measure rainfall in metres? And again, the UK gets nearly a metre, lots of places in the US, Europe, plenty of rain about. So some facts about Taiwan now. So looking at 2015, there's a quote, Taiwan is facing its worst drought in 67 years with the island reservoirs at dangerously low levels. That was a BBC article, links there for you. Um, and we get another threat of a water shortage or whatever every single year, it seems like. Sherman Reservoir at the moment, not at the moment, 2015, that was at 25% capacity. Uh, 1st of June 2008, there was an announcement that they're basically going to build the dam wall higher down in Tainan, I think it is. Uh, increasing capacity by 2031 to 1.9 billion tonnes. Uh, another link there about Ushan Toll Reservoir, June 2018, water shortage looming in Taiwan. So we get lots of it, lots of rain, but constant threats of water shortages. And this is one of the reasons here. So we've got a silt now accounting for a third of the capacity at six of Taiwan's 18 main reservoirs. So looking at this bar here, this column here. So you've got about a third of six of the 18 reservoirs in Taiwan at the moment in 2018 are full of silt. Others at varying, varying levels of capacity. But the figures are a bit striking that enough silt accumulates in Taiwan's reservoirs every year to fill one Bai He reservoir, which is in Tainan, and every 10 years to fill a Sherman reservoir, which is in Taoyuan, up towards Taipei. So the capacity of reservoirs for storing water will be down to half of their design capacity by 2030 in the worst case scenario. So that's a reservoir, all of our reservoirs in Taiwan, and they're half full of silt by 2030 in the worst case scenario, which is obviously not good when we need more and more water, right? Uh, you can have a look at cw.com.tw, it's, uh, it's the Commonwealth Taiwan website. Um, we've got some monthly mean, I think, rain and temperature statistics here. Yeah, precip precipitation totals in millimetres. 
So you can see that we get not a lot of rainfall in October, November, December, January. In the south, even worse, if you look at the look at the charts on Wikipedia for that, taking their figures from the Central Weather Bureau, nine months was it? Uh, Ninety percent of the rain falls in the rainy season from May to October down south, so they get even less rainfall uh, in the winter months. Uh, you, you hear about water rationing, you know, cropping up as a, a thing that's going to become more of an issue in Taiwan as we go along. So we need to store more water, that's pretty obvious. So what do we do with our water when we do get rain? So that's where it goes. Those two red arrows, in general, um, we get it down the drain as quickly as possible and then into the river over here. Hello, Cooper. That's Cooper hunting frogs or whatever. Um, and as soon as it's in the river, it's off out to the ocean. It's, it's goodbye rainfall. So we can't easily use it once it's that once it's down the drain, it's essentially down the river. As far as we're concerned, it, it, it's gone, right? Then, because we need more water, we're starting to build desalination plants in the wettest developed country on the planet. We're building desalination. We're throwing it down the rivers <laughs> to the ocean. Then we're building desalination plants to pull it back out of the ocean. Which, it just seems crazy, right? So... Lots of information you can get online. This is from Brad Lancaster. He's in Tucson, Arizona, I think. This is where he started. And he went from this to this. And it looks like an amazing difference, especially when you're thinking this is Tucson, Arizona, quite dry. Um, there's a link to his video here. There's a TED Talk. I think he's got his own YouTube channel as well. Uh, just really simple, cheap methods that he was using. Um, irrigating the street by, instead of throwing the water down the drains, allowing the water run off into planted trees that were in a little bit of a hollow so that the rainwater soaked into them. In Taiwan, you might want to defer to, to you know, engineers in, in government positions to make sure we don't end up with liquefaction <laughs> uh, by storing too much water in the ground next to a 15-storey apartment building like this, but um, that's got to be a better solution if we can work it rather than throwing it down the drains into the river and out to the ocean. It's one simple thing that you can do. This is the TED Talk for Brad Lancaster. I won't play it here, but um, the link is there in the presentation. Um, he calls it planting the rain. Um, lots of other very simple things that he did on his property, such as catching water, water off the roof, storing it in the ground, storing it in cisterns. Um, and again, his garden ended up looking like the road, like the street did. So uh, There's another guy, Zach Lancaster. This video is definitely worth watching, especially if you're in a tropical area, because this was... Uh, this is Zach Weiss, sorry, Elemental Ecosystems. Definitely worth giving this one, this video, a look. Um, because this was in Uruguay, I think. I think this was in... Oh, Ecuador, Ecuador. So it's a tropical climate. You'll see it's very similar to, to Taiwan. Lots and lots of rainfall. But he's slowing that water down all throughout the client's property, making ponds, making dams, probably swales and, and so on as well, and soaking it into the ground as much as possible. Um, lots and lots of life in the soil at depth. And once that soil gets moist, a uh, similar thing to Tucson, Arizona, once the soil gets moist, it's easier for heavy rains to soak into that soil then, spread out quickly and run off into the aquifers, the water table, the rivers more slowly, instead of with hard-packed, dry desert soil, rainfalls run straight off, big floods. You've probably seen stuff on the internet over the last year from places like Saudi Arabia, I think, where they're just getting flash floods like crazy because one heavy rain and there's nowhere for the water to water just can't soak into the soil right so on to water harvesting with an airship it's really really simple you've got a roof we collect all the rain we need from the rain on the roof that's it really um, some really really simple ways of removing particles leaves and so on um, running them you can see here this part this arrow here where it where it goes into the pipe that goes down to the water tank there's a raised lip on that pipe stones around it so that 
the stones will slow the waterfall, uh, the water flow down, so that you're not having particles carried so much at speed. Particles naturally fall down between the, the stones. Then you could have a couple of those on the way to the the downpipe to the main water system in the earth bank. You can have things like um, mesh to stop mosquitoes and insects getting into the gutter because we don't want mosquitoes breeding everywhere in Taiwan around the house. Um, but that's a simple thing. They do a similar, yeah, similar tactic in places like the outback in Australia or places where you get lots of forest fires coming through. They'll have a wire mesh over the top of their gutter, in that case to stop leaves and debris accumulating in the gutter because you don't want the fire getting under the eaves of your house. In our case, we could use mesh to keep insects and yeah, leaves and stuff that will blow around from, from bamboo and trees as well out. But really simple to get most of the particles out before they go into the cistern. Um, cisterns are usually buried in the earth banks, keeps the water at a stable temperature throughout the year. And then inside the house there's a, a WOM, a water organising module, that filters and pumps water to a pressurised tank for washing, bathing, laundry, etc. And when you couple that with the fact that you're using the grey water from your showers, running that through a planter uh, to clean the water to a state where it's then fit for flushing the toilets, which is flushing the toilets is 40% of your water usage in an average house household, uh, you can start to see how, how little water you'd actually need when you're reusing it that many times. So that's it really. The, the water organising module is about as simple as a pump, um, some different different rated uh, reverse osmosis filters. So we have them everywhere in Taiwan here, three filters typically, and maybe a chlorine filter and maybe a carbon filter. You can go down, ours go down to about five, five micro, five, na yeah, five micrometers, I think. So tiny, tiny holes. Once you start getting down to one, then you're starting to filter out things like bacteria and viruses as well. So don't have time here to go into... Uh, a question I hear a lot is, can we drink rainwater? Which seems it seems a bit crazy to me because we're drinking the rainwater anyway that comes from the reservoir that is full of fish surrounded by wildlife with birds flying over the top of it that are all doing their mating, urinating and droppings in and around that reservoir water. Um, we, we just bomb some, some chlorine in there, right? That's what the water companies do. They'll bomb some chlorine in there to just kill everything after it's been through various things like sand filters and oxygenation spraying and stuff at water treatment plants. But you can do any of that on a smaller scale at your house. There are people that make uh, biological filters with varying grades of sand and stone in them. Um, and you actually get some friendly bacteria, I think, end up growing on that, that that does some of the filtering or something. But that stuff is, you know, you can install a reverse osmosis filter, water organising module and a pump, and away you go. Or you can start experimenting more with, with more organic or, or natural kinds of filters with stone and sand and so on. It's all easily doable. Um, probably going to end up with more water than you can use in a house like this in an area with rainfall like this. Uh, the problem with Taiwanese reservoirs at the moment, I think we can only store about six weeks, six weeks or two months of our required, of our total required water. And we rely on little rain, small rain events to, to top that up. So this is a really simple way of storing your own water. Acid rain is another, is another question that, that crops up. I'm sure there's a, you know, if I got my ninja suit on and did a quick bit of Google Foo now, I'm pretty sure I'd find something pretty quick. Dropping chalk tablets in there or again running it through the same kind of filters that they use in water treatment plants made of, of varying grades of stone, sand, that kind of thing, um, would probably remove the acidity. But yeah, really easy. And um, yeah, hit the subscribe button, make sure you click the little bell, and uh, I'll drop another one next week. Cheers.